Hey everybody, how's it going? I just wanted to make a quick video here because the new coding LLM code stroll by Mixtral AI was released in the past week. And I wanted to make a video showing how you can get started making your first API request in Python and start playing around with this new model in your personal projects or research. So this model code stroll, yeah, it was just released by Mixtral and it is a coding LLM, which means it is intended to produce structured um, coding outputs. So structured programming languages, um, programming outputs. So it's, it's different from a model like GPT or Llama 3 in the fact that those ones can generate programming language outputs. They can generate code, but they're not specifically trained for that. So this might be something comparable to Code Llama if you've heard in the past. And you can see here the, the benchmarks for the new CodeStrel 22B model. And it out, out benchmarks a lot of the other um, older models. And it is quite powerful. So, um, and you can see here as well, yeah, it generates a lot of the common programming languages. It, it, it exceeds specifically at languages like Python. And it can do a lot of the other obscure languages or ones that you don't think about, like, for example, like Fortran. Um, currently, GPT-4 can't do Fortran code very well, so that could be a benefit to this. And with CodeStrel, you get these structured outputs, so you can generate, you can, you can ensure that it's actual code and not like text or it has like a weird summary attached. Um, so with that, with that being said, I ran a lot a little bit. Let me show you how you can hop over to the Mistral dashboard, grab your API key, and make your first request in Python. I'm here on the Mistral website. I actually took the time to already log in. You, so you just have to head over to mistral.ai, M-I-S-T-R-A-L.ai, and sign in. There should be a sign in button at the top right of your screen, sign in with your Google account. And you should see this uh, blue section as well. It will ask you to click a button and verify your phone number. So go ahead and do that. And then you can head over to the API key section. I already created an API key here, YouTube, but just go ahead and click that button, create an API key. And it allows you to get a new API key for free and you can make 30 requests per second. Or, or sorry, 30 requests per minute, uh, one per second. After you do that, you can click the code control button here and it will tell you, okay, here's your, your endpoints that you can use. And to actually get started, what we can do is click on the docs page here and you can head over to the section that says code generation. And here it will give you a introduction on code stroll. It, you know, it says explain, uh, it's trained on 80 models. And it also shows you here, there's two main endpoints. There's codestroll.mistral.ai, which is the fr uh, free one, free until August 1st, has a rate limit of 30 and gets uh, requires your phone number to get a new API key, but it's free to get started. And there's the other api.mistral.ai, which can be for businesses and can give you a rate limit of 200 requests per second. Um, with that being said, it does say ideal for business, um, but I wanted to hop over one thing to note with code stroll that they don't put or specify, you know, too many in too many places. It's, it's kind of subtle, but one thing to note that this model has a, um, they call it the, the um, MNPL, the, the Mistral non-production license, which basically means that you can only use this for your own kind of side projects or uh, or research just to play around with. So you cannot actually use this model commercially yet. So that's something to keep in mind. And I would suggest you read through this article as well. Uh, but let's hop back over. And yeah, this article um, explains the basics of getting started. One thing to note is there's two main endpoints, fill in the middle and completion. With completion, you just give like the first part of the code, uh, for example, like a function signature, and then it will just fill in the rest for you. The thing I'll demonstrate is the uh, fill in the middle, which is actually quite nice. You give the prompt, which is the beginning of the code, maybe the function signature, 
as well as the suffix, which is the kind of like endpoint, and it will fill in, it will generate all the code in between, and it is ensure that it is structured and, um, you know, uh, like like valid actual code. Like it, it doesn't generate this, it doesn't guarantee that the syntax is valid, but it will guarantee that it's actual code. So I'm gonna hop over to VS Code right here to, to show what an API request looks like. I already, you would uh, usually click the copy code button here. Um, I actually already grabbed it. So let's just head over to VS Code. So I just prepared, I basically just copied the code snippet and added uh, rich formatting, which will be able to like format the syntax in a nice way. Um, so when you're making these API requests, ensure that you have Python installed. And I'm gonna actually use virtual environment. Um, if you don't have it, I, I would suggest it's not required, um, but it keeps your packages contained. You can uh, search up Python virtual environment to install it. So I'll create a virtual environment and, and activate it by doing period space period slash VNV bin activate because I'm on a MacBook. Um, if you're on a Windows, it would be VNV slash scripts slash activate with a capital S on scripts. So once we're in the virtual environment, what we can actually do is just to pip install Mistral AI. And I'll also include two other packages here, python.env to load the API key, which I have in the dot env file, pure env. And I'll include the package rich, which will just give us some formatting for the code output. Um, so I'll go ahead and click clear. And you can see here with rich, I imported the console and syntax. We're loading our API, uh, API key, and then we're making the request. I just grabbed the example from the docs, which is filling in the Fibonacci sequence and we are getting the code response and then just printing the syntax highlighted code in console. So let's just go ahead and run this very simple script. Okay, so you can see that it generated the formatted code and it did it reasonably fast within probably two seconds. It's not the most fast inference that I've seen, API inference endpoint, but it is pretty good. And you can see here, it looks like it generated us some good uh, working code. And uh, one thing to also keep in mind, and um, I won't briefly, you know, go into this, I won't go into this too much, uh, but there's a lot of things you could do, uh, cool things like, for example, you could automatically exec or execute the code. Um, I'm not sure if this will actually work, um, but okay, yep, it's so exec, so enter number 10. Um, so, and it, um, I, I'm not sure if that is uh, if that if that is uh, if that is correct, but um, you could automatically exec. So if you think about like this code, it was automatically generated by AI, and we just run it there. We just ran it there, uh, which is super cool. Um, so I'll I'll end it at that point. But since this is kind of just really simple, uh, getting started with the API, and and I hope I hope you guys start to play around with it. Uh, so I'll end the video there and thank you so much for, for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or feedback or discussion, just leave them in the comments. And yeah, I hope to see you guys uh, in the next video.